Hi everybody, it's me, Eric Kimball. Out here on this cold December day. And I want to talk about this row of trees to the right of me. I'm going to walk down through this field. This field belongs to a guy from New Jersey. Never met him. And he's owned this for years. It's like 100 acres. But this row of trees and brush that you see here separates this New Jersey gentleman's land from the field on the other side, which is owned by my neighbor, Ed. And this row down through here of trees and dense brush is called a hedgerow. It's actually not just a border between two properties. It's also the town line between the town I live in, Sempronius, New York, and the town I'm walking in right now, which is Moravia, New York. Now, I know this is a hedgerow because when my family and I moved here to this rural area when I was in ninth grade, a local farmer said we could cut down the dead elm trees that were in his hedgerow. There were lots of them at that time. The bark was off them. They were just beautiful trees that had died and were standing there. And, and the farmer let us use his tractor and his wagon. And my stepfather and I, we cut down a lot of elms and I split them in the driveway with wedges. We didn't have a hydraulic splitter. We had uh, a sledgehammer and wedges. That's the only way you're going to split elm apart from a hydraulic splitter because it's so stringy, so tough. You can actually bury a whole splitting wedge into a chunk of elm without it cracking. Yeah, I remember that real well. So look, look here at this hedgerow and look at the trees. There's grapevines growing up there. And as we walk down through here, I want to explain to you that if this field and this hedgerow were in Port Royal, Kentucky, where Wendell Berry lives, or if it were in Ohio or some of those states out there, it would not be a hedgerow. It would be a fence row. Turns out there's a regional difference in what we call the same thing. And you will recall that I wrote Wendell Berry asking if he had ever written anything about hedgerows, and he really hadn't. There's one small mention. I asked him the wrong question. I should have asked him if he wrote anything about fence rows. And my friend Kevin Ireton, who was helping me find information on Wendell Berry's writings about hedgerows even asked me, do you mean fence rows? And I said, no, hedgerows. So I, I figured a fence row is a row of fence posts, but it's not. Now, I'm going to stop here. I actually have definitions. And definitions are important, it turns out. And they are interesting. I think. So fence row. No, I'll start with hedgerow, which is a word, the first known use of which predates the 12th century. That's before the 1100s. Hedgerow was a word. And this is according to Merriam-Webster, who I tend to like when it comes to dictionaries. Merriam-Webster is a pretty good source. A hedgerow is a row of shrubs or trees enclosing or separating fields. Okay? That's a hedgerow. And it's an old word. Now, fence row came into use, according to Merriam-Webster, around 1842. And the definition is the land occupied by a fence, including the uncultivated land on each side. So what happened was 
fences were put up and the land on either side grew up like you see here and that became a fence row and so in some regions of the country like I said Kentucky Ohio and out that way every dividing uh, uh, hedge like you see here it was a fence row and that's some then there's another one shelter belt have you heard that term shelter belt here's the definition and by the way the first known use of this is 1868 I would have thought that shelter belt was a newer word but here it is a barrier of trees and shrubs that provides protection as for crops from wind and storm and lessens erosion so there you go we got fence rows we got hedgerows we got shelter belts they're pretty much the same thing depends on where you live now I don't think Wendell Berry ever did write an essay on fence rows but he did and I found this by some Google searches he did mention fence rows several times in his writings and uh, I've got one quote here that I'd like to read because this is this is just classic Wendell Berry it's one of those things you read and then you read again and you you read again to get the full impact of what he said but I will read this this is an excerpt from the making of a marginal farm and I believe that's an essay that was put into a book I can't find the book well I actually I did find a book for copy of the book for 600 bucks limited edition but here it is uh, I'd love to read the read it someday looking at the monocultures of industrial civilization we yearn with a kind of homesickness for the humanness and the naturalness of a highly diversified multi-purpose landscape democratically divided with many margins the margins are of the utmost importance they are the divisions between holdings as well as between between kinds of work and kinds of land these margins lanes streams wooded fence rows and the like are always freeholds of wilderness where limits are set on human intention unquote so here we are walking along this freehold of wildness it wasn't wilderness I said the wrong word oh well, I'm only doing one take with this these margins lanes stream sides wooded fence rows and the like are always freeholds of wildness where limits are set on human intention I'm glad I found that and corrected that so there you go Wendell Berry did say something about fence rows or hedgerows now as for that essay that I told you about in that episode that I thought Wendell Berry had written I have found it and I have the permission of the author to share it with you it's pretty amazing that I found this and I'll tell you about it in the next episode it's getting cold out here I'm going to return to my home I want to show you there there's a deer stand up in that tree I actually built that and I haven't been out here in a while it's still up there someone has put a ladder and another uh, stand below the wooden stand let me see if I can close up here no yeah there we go you can see it the wooden part off to the right I put that up many years ago when my kids were interested in hunting oh, let's get a view up there and uh, it's a good spot it's a good spot but uh, probably it's not quite as safe as it was I sat up in that tree stand waiting for a deer one year we'll back up here you hear the geese where are they
Lovely. Where was I? Ah, I was in the hedgerow or the fence row in that big tree telling you that that's the stand. The only time in my life I hunted, I sat in that stand for a couple hours in the cold and I thought to myself, I really have better things to do. I didn't grow up hunting. Uh, I was a suburban kid. But I'm glad to see that my kids hunt. Two out of the three are avid hunters. It's a good thing. And uh, this hedgerow, I need to bring this to a close. But this hedgerow, there's another one that goes off. They go, they're all over the place, these hedgerows or fence rows. We've got memories, my family, my kids and I. You know, one of the memories, and it happened just, uh, I wonder if there's a tr trail through here. You see those pine trees up there? The deer hang out in there in the winter. They're safe there, except during deer season with this deer, this stand right here. But those pine trees are in back of a cemetery. And uh, we, uh, Marlene and I will be buried there. We have our plots. Someday I'll go up there and show them to you. But once I was out here with my kids, see we're in the briars here. That's one of the things that hedgerows and fence rows are known for, is the berry bushes. Well, I won't go over there, but now that field is owned by another person. And uh, the memory, I'll tell you the memory that I have here. Uh, there's a few actually, but one day my kids and I were out here and we were right about here. And we heard our dog, Annie was the dog's name, get in a fight with a cat over there in the brush. Out of sight, we could hear it. We heard the cat, we heard the dog. It was brutal, it was epic. And it went on for the longest time. And by the time we got over there, Annie had killed the cat. And wouldn't you think a cat could run away? I don't know exactly how, well, how it happened. But Annie killed a cat, and it was an epic battle. Any dog who can engage a wild cat and kill it is a heck of a dog. Now, oh, <laughs> I just fell in a woodchuck hole. Yes, you got to watch out where you walk. Sorry if I move the camera fast. I'm, I realize I have to be a little slower if I'm going to be a good videographer. Oh my goodness, this is 13 minutes long. Hey folks, thanks for watching. My hands are cold. We're gonna call it, bring this to a close, but now you know the difference between hedgerows and fence rows and shelter belts. There really isn't a difference. <laughs>